Hi, my name is Kevin Sawicki from Sight & Sound Productions. You might be used to using a stills lens like this one. Today we'll be looking at the main difference between this and cinema primes and cinema zooms. On my right I have a Canon 16-35 EF lens and on my left I have an Ingenue 15-40 Cinema Zoom. We'll start front to back to compare the two. They both have focus rings on the front. The still lens just has a rubberized grip on it while the Cinema Zoom has a toothed geared focus ring. This allows you to use a uh, industry standard follow focus on it that has a 0.8 pitch. Also, the still lens doesn't have hard stops, so when you get to infinity, you could still rotate the ring past infinity. If you get to close focus, it'll still rotate past that. On the easy, once you get to infinity, which is the marker here, it goes a little bit past infinity and it has a hard stop. This makes it easier to uh, put wireless follow focuses on here and calibrate it uh, so it, it just doesn't keep spinning. Moving back, the 16-35 has a zoom ring here to adjust it, and the EZ has a zoom ring in the center to go from 15 to 40. You'll notice that it still has the geared ring going around it, so you could also put a motor on this if you wanted to do a slow zoom. And then on the back of the Ingenue lens, there is iris control, while on the still lens, you don't have iris control, you have to control it in camera. Another thing that I wanted to point out is that on the Canon still lens, there is a built-in lens stabilizer and the ability to turn autofocus on or manual focus on. Uh, but with this Ingenue Easy lens, there is no image stabilization built into the lens and there is no autofocus. It is solely a manual focus lens. Moving to the back, we have a EF mount on the still lens, which is made up of three metal flanges. On the cinema zoom, we have a PL mount, which stands for positive lock, and it has these four notched metal flanges, and that gives you a much more secure mount onto your cinema camera for a lens as large as this one. Additionally, you'll notice on this EF lens, there is metal contacts here. That allows the camera to talk to this lens for autofocus, image stabilization, and for iris control. On this specific zoom lens, there are no uh, electronic contact points here um, because everything is manual. There are certain cinema lenses that do have metal contact points and that usually sends metadata to the camera uh, like where the focus is at, where the zoom is at, and where the iris is at, typically used for the VFX department. Typically it's the responsibility of the second AC to retrieve the lenses from the lens case and pass them off to the first AC so he or she can mount it to the camera. Uh, I've been instructed that you usually leave the back cap and the front cap in the case. It's one less thing to hold and everybody knows where it is at the end of the day. And when you're passing off the lens, you hold the lens like a coffee mug and the first AC will have their hand palm up and you put it in their palm and you wait until they say got it before you release your hand. Usually a lens will be coming off of the camera so the first AC will also have a lens typically in their right hand held like a coffee cup and you will have your hand as a second AC palm up and you can place your new lens in their palm and they will place the old lens in your palm and you both say got it when you have a firm grip on it. You go back to the case, you put your front cap, back cap back on it. If you're traveling, you usually set it to uh, all the way open and infinity which retracts the blades for safe storing and put it in your case and make sure you lock it up. Now we'll show you how to mount this cinema lens to a cinema camera like this Alexa Mini. After removing the port cap by rotating the friction ring to the left, all you need to do is line up one of these notches on the flanges to the registration pin located in the top right corner of the mount. Uh, typically we have it so that the indicators that show your iris and your focus, which are these little tiny arrows here, are to the side of the camera so that when you're looking at it as a camera assistant, you can clearly see where your markings are at. A uh, zoom lens mounts the same as a prime lens. Just line up uh, one of those notches to the registration pin. Just like so. You do have to be careful when mounting a longer lens like the zoom 
uh, because you do have a lot more torque uh, that you're putting on those flanges. So just be careful, make sure it is fully seated on the mount, make sure that it is locked with that locking pin before rotating the friction ring. Now that we have a longer, larger lens on here, we thought it would be good to show you the importance of using a lens support. This is a RE LS9. Uh, I put 19 mil rods on here because this is a 19 mil rod mount. There's also 15 mil rods on the camera and there are different manufacturers and models that have 15 mil mounts. You'll notice if I just slap this on, there's a pretty big gap between the lens support and the lens. So we actually need to add a lens post threads onto the bottom of this lens. They come in different sizes. And although the logo faces the front, I like to have it so that the knob faces outward so it's easy to adjust. We'll slap that on, line it up with the post. And first we screw in the thumb screw that goes into the post. Then we'll tighten this lever that adjusts the side to side. And then we'll finally tighten this thumb screw that locks uh, the lens support to the 19 mil rails. And that protects the PL mount on this camera from the weight of the lens, any stress if you're hand holding this camera and you're running with it, uh, just the weight alone could damage the PL mount uh, and it translates all of that stress through this post and into the rods. And while we're here, we also wanted to talk to you guys about choosing the right lens set for your camera specifically talking about the difference between super 35 and full frame lenses. Uh, these are the ultra primes that we were talking about earlier. Usually a rental house uh, provides a six lens set for primes. Uh, we have a 16, 24, 32, 50, 85, and 100. We also do have other focal lengths in stock. So sometimes a DP might want to swap out a couple lenses or might want to take all of them. Um, over here we have the Zeiss Supremes, which are a full frame lens. Uh, 25, 29, 35, 50, 85, and 100 mil comes in the set. We also have the 21 mil if a DP would want to swap out for that one. Um, and the main difference between these two types of lenses is how they were engineered and uh, the size of the image circle. Uh, on a lens like this, it is a Super 35 lens originally designed and engineered to be used with uh, 35 millimeter film cameras. Uh, so with a camera like this, this is a Super 35 Alexa Mini. Um, the sensor is roughly the size of negative film. So uh, when you mount this lens to this camera body, the image circle uh, will fully cover the sensor so there won't be any vignetting. If you tried to do the same with a uh, Mini LF that has a full frame sensor, uh, on the wider end of the spectrum, definitely on like the 16 mil, you'll see some heavy vignetting or, or black uh, edges around your frame. And that's because the image circle that is being projected onto the sensor doesn't actually cover the full sensor. So for a camera like this, you would definitely need to use um, full frame lenses, which have a larger image circle. Uh, another example of a uh, full frame lens that we have in house would be the Ingenue lenses and we can actually remove the rear element of the Ingenue lens and put on a different element which converts it into a full frame image circle. And that covers the basics of cinema lenses. If you have any additional questions or want to see additional content, feel free to comment below and definitely subscribe. Uh, also visit us online at sightandsoundhawaii.com. Thanks so much for tuning in.